Welcome to Anita Bugatti Gaming Esports Hot Topics. That's the least, the spiciest memes. I'm Marissa Roberto. And why do you do this? I'm yeah. Who's Your Daddy Moore? And we're <laughs> going to present all the goodies we've gathered, which we will discuss and hopefully argue. But luckily for all of us, if that happens, we Ooh. have a mute button. I want to shut you off from this running these scripts. Jesus. Okay, you know what? That was gold. And so am I. Remember, okay. we like when you call us out when we're wrong and praise us when we're spitting truth. So let's get to it, shall we? Let's dive right into our top stories with a brand new Apex Legends Battle Pass. Respawn released a Season 2 Battle Pass for its popular Battle Royale yesterday. The new season adds a new playable legend, Watson, giant animals that wander the map, a new airdrop gun called L-Star, new skins, and new challenges. Season 2 comes just over three months after Season 1 dropped, which was not very well received by the community and caused a big drop in player base. Brody, what? do you think season two, I mean, has the changes that could maybe uplift Apex and bring it back from the somewhat dead? Yes. Ooh. I do. Uh, the oh. first one, well, okay, so we need to give some history here. Oh, let's some tell us more, Mr. Zion. From Mr. Daddy Moore. Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> the, uh, the uh, so originally, the Respawn didn't expect Apex to be this popular. They didn't expect Apex to pop off like it did. They're mm -hmm. like, whoa, this caught us off guard. So they had to then direct some of the resources away from making Titanfall 3 mm -hmm. into Apex. And that cost a bit of, uh, cost, caused, Jesus, a bit of a leggy start for them at the, yeah, please, at the <laughs> beginning of, of the, um, that game's launch. Yeah. So when they're trying to make content for it, they're like, okay, we get, we get something out there to get pe yeah. people interested, but it had a bit of a side effect of like, oh, the content they're going to make for this isn't that good. So now they've actually put their full resources into this. They've taken some time for season two and they said, hey, we're listening to you guys. We know what you guys want. Mm -hmm. Here is all of it. And uh, I'm so excited for Ranked. Yo, if there really is everything in this. Yeah. If you just watch the trailer for this alone, man, there's even like jumping out of the sky emotes, like just different things you can yeah. do that make it so much more fun. Fortniteify For it. They, they really <laughs> did Fortniteify it. That's a perfect way to describe it. And that's okay because that's what people like. That's what young people like. And mm -hmm. if they want to keep young people involved and young people playing, this is what they've got to do. I love that there's a new hero as well. Are we calling it heroes in Apex? I keep forgetting. Champions. Champions. Yeah. My God, you know what? Can we just keep it like one name across the board? Yeah, right. Right? Oh my Mom's God. Mom's getting old. She doesn't remember. Um, no, I, I love it. I think, like, even with this trailer alone, yo, I might get back into Apex a little bit. Yeah, that's, no. That's I, fun. And for, and for me, as someone that's been behind on my Rocket League grinding, this is even tempting me to pull away from that and get yeah. back into Apex. I was even talking to to uh, Sebi. Is, we might Sebi. jump back in. Yeah. Sebi's yeah. He'll be our backpack. Go. He'll carry all our items for us. <laughs> no, no, well, I don't <laughs> think Seb is that good at it. You know, we Whoa. need to play. No, you know who's really good at Apex? Ron <laughs> Lee. Ron Lee is tall top tier at Apex. I watched him play for a bit. He was streaming the other night. Dang, that boy's got All talent. Right. So him and I will carry you. We'll jump in. Okay, whatever. Yeah. I don't, All right. I'm fine Anyways, moving on. Optic Gaming's Gears of War squad is legendary. If you don't know, it's won 17 event championships since their signing in August 2016 and is easily the best Gears of War team of all time. Mm -hmm. Which is why it came as a shock when Optic announced yesterday that it is dropping the squad. This comes on the heels of Optic's, uh, Optic being purchased by Immortals and the departure could be a result of that. I see you shaking your head, Marissa, so I'm going to let I'm you so just go in first. No, I'm just, I'm so disappointed for them. I'm so disappointed for their fans. Do you have any idea how many fans this team had? 17 it's championships. The green wall. Yeah, it's they, one of the they biggest are exactly brands out there. Hashtag Green Wall, but the Green Wall has been completely dismantled by these big executives coming in, mm -hmm. buying Optic, and now selling it off because they're like, man, you know what? Maybe this is not as lucrative as we thought it would be. We're just going to sell it. That's literally what just happened here, mm -hmm. sadly, for Optic H Hector, um, for all of these boys. These boys better be picked up by a team, but literally, Immortals came in, they bought it, they're like, you know what, uh, we don't give a flying F, a flying F about Gears Esports at all, even though this is a top tier team, the most top tier team we've ever to seen. To be fair. No, we've, that, that we've ever seen, Brody. They just let them go like that? Oh my god, yeah, bro, I can't even believe the, it. At the end of the day, to At the end fair, of the day, yo, <laughs> someone take a drink. Yeah, it, it, it's a business, and most people also don't give an F about Gears of War. Yo, that is right? not true. Like, there are so many people that love Gears of War, and it's hating, gotten so I'm much better over it. the years. It's, I, it's just about to launch the new saying, season. Okay. Are you serious? I guess we had to use that. I'm trying to talk here. It's, at the end of the day, I don't, like, I, I don't, disparage uh, that that community right i think it's a great community they, they they love their game they got a good thing going on i love the hype they bring but most people don't care and immortals has to look at this new acquisition and start to make sure that they're not bleeding money anywhere and i guarantee you that was a money bleed for them 
for sure. And they have to run a business. So now coming into this, they have to take all these brands and all these teams they acquired and say, okay, what do we really need? What's bringing us in something? And how do we make sure this is sustainable and we can keep being a company in esports? I get, I get that owning an esports team is a vanity play. It's a vanity investment for sure because you have to make sure that that team wins and that team can pull in money. This team did win. It did pull in money. It was constantly pulling in money. Why? I don't understand why they just couldn't give them life, give them something, brand it with Immortals. Immortals doesn't have a freaking team out there. Let it be that. Let them play on their vanity and play on their wins. It's an amazing team put together. Don't just let it die like that. Oh my God. It's just, I, it really upsets I, me. I agree. I say it's, it's sad, but it makes sense. Freaking business! Listen, Team Fighting Tactics is Ride's brand new auto battler, and it has attracted plenty of attention on Twitch, and I mean a lot of attention. It has consistently had more viewers than League of Legends ever since it launched last month, which leads to a very important question. Yes. Brody. What? If Team Fight Tactics is outperforming League of Legends, is that good or bad for League as a whole? Hmm. That's uh, I guess it yeah. depends on the way you phrase it. So is, is the question, is this good for League of Legends the game or League of Legends the brand? Because obviously this is really good for the brand. And if they start to approach it as a brand, which they really have. I mean, they have plushies, they have the uh, pops, whatever those little things are, right? Like they have stuff you can buy. It's a, it's a franchise like Minecraft, right? It, it is something that they make money off of. Sure besides just the video game. Mm. So if they can make something else in that universe, keep people in that universe, and be able to story tell with that, I don't see why they'd be upset about the success of this at all and that mm. it's outperforming their, uh, their main game, right? For sure. Because yeah. even if League of Legends were to, it's not gonna die, it's a completely different game. Even if League of Legends were to die from this, I don't think they're gonna care because they're gonna have so many other avenues that they're gonna be able to pull in. They mm. say, wow, our brand works across different types of games, what else can we do? And next thing you know, we got a League of Legends Overwatch. Is that what you actually think is going to happen? You know, League of Legends Overwatch? Yes, it I'm is a big ecosystem for sure. They've built a big giant world here that so many fans are involved in. They can't get enough. They want more. And I do love this for them. It's a great, it's amazing for their brand for sure. I love it. But I feel like it also can be a little bit incestuous in a way, right? Okay. Like we, well, right, because we have everything just playing into this world and this bubble and it's just like feeding into more, more, more. I mean, it's fine. I didn't mean to call you out there more, more, more. Well, hey, but I it, get it. It does feed into it. And I do, like, I, I'm down for it. As long as people are enjoying it, why not? Listen, if you love something, you just keep playing. As long as you're not hurting anybody, live your life. It's a, bu it's a bubble. It, it, again, it's, a it's, bubble. it's gonna be like when, when Hearthstone blew up, right? Hearthstone was, was huge for a while, and then it, it faded down, and then most people stopped playing it, right? There's it's still, still a big, money. No, there's still a big scene behind it, yeah. but it's not as big as it was back in the day, right? It's just, the same thing's gonna happen with yeah. auto chess, just across the board with Underlords, with this. It's, people are gonna get into it, they're gonna play it a lot, and yeah. eventually they're gonna go back to their main games. That's yeah, the inevitability. I, yeah, I mean, it's just an interesting game to play. It's just an interesting game to, game to try to get into and play. Too RNG for me. It's, so I mean, let's move on. Not okay, talking about fine. it anymore. Yeah. For our last story, Activision announced two new cities for the upcoming franchise, Call of Duty World League. Los Angeles and Minnesota are joining the already announced Atlanta, Dallas, New York, Paris, and Toronto teams. Now more teams will be on the way, but that means that there are currently five American teams, one Canadian team, and one French team. Now, do you, uh, what's, what's this? I know you're big in the COD scene. I love so I don't COD. know, maybe you've heard rumblings from the peeps in there, what they're thinking about this, I but do you think it's dispersed enough, or is it, I mean, COD is a North American yeah. centered, just anything with consoles, really, uh, right. is North American centered. So I guess yeah. it makes sense that there are a lot of North American teams as a cross. Hon honestly, I'm surprised that there was a French team announced already. <laughs> you know, like, well, it's, they gotta give it a little bit diverse, you know? For sure, no, I just feel like this is very much a scene that is based in, because it yeah. is also a console East. Sport, mm -hmm. A lot of console esports are obviously always here in North yeah. America because this is where consoles really shine. Because we're, we're a bunch of plebs in North we, America, uh, and we that's are. why we're bad at esports. And you know what? There's nothing <laughs> wrong with that. We enjoy our games in any form, and we enjoy them on consoles. So why not? I do think that yes, there needs to be more diversity, absolutely. But I mean, I also don't want there to be a whole Overwatch scenario where it's like, yeah, there are different teams from different cities, but they have players from completely different places oh, that are yeah, playing yeah, yeah. for that city too, right? So because there's going to be a lot of that as well. Like even the Toronto team that we have. They're American players, right? So it's yeah. going to be mostly American players that play this game, yeah. and you'll see most of that in the franchising. So if they're all North American teams, they all come from North American cities, I'm totally fine with that because their players are indeed North American. Yeah, I guess it's the same as, like, you look at traditional sports, too. It happens as well, especially in hockey. I mean, like, I, th I think at one point it was, like, 500-something out of the 700 players in the NHL were Canadian, yeah. but a lot of them played on the American teams. Yeah. I, think that's, I think that's fine. We have to look at the... 
The thing that's really good about esports starting to go the direction of city-based things mm -hmm. is it brings people in a lot easier. Now yeah. you can have someone say, hey, I'm going to go to this COD event this weekend. Someone's like, I don't know COD. Like, who do I cheer for? And then it's like, well, just cheer for Toronto. Yeah. Right? Cause it's, and they're like, oh, okay. It's an easy in. It's an easy in. The easy you don't have to give them all these stories mm -hmm. to like pick the team that, that fits with the, what you like the best. Just yep. Cheer for your local team, right? So it's, right. it is a really good move, I think, for esports to actually start heading that direction. Oh my gosh, in general, absolutely. I mean, I can't wait for this to happen with Rocket League too. I really hope it happens yeah. soon, where you guys can franchise. I think, I think and it'd be the perfect. It's just amazing for the for just brands overall, and mm -hmm. um, the fact that broadcasts are looking at it too now because they are starting to understand it. When it is attached to a city, it's easy. More it's something everyone understand. understands. Hey, I know the place. And you can talk to your grandma about it. Isn't that all we want? Well, I, I suppose. Okay, moving on. <laughs> it's time to check in with streamers and clip it. Our first clip comes from, it's another gem actually from Mario Maker 2. Forrest and focuses in on a very difficult level. You were, you were tripping. I just gotta let you know, she was yeah. cheering on the whole time, like, go, 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 go. Oh no. It's, you were uh, stressing. Dude, first of all, community. these communities are insane. These people yeah. that make these games, like, you guys are so freaking creative. I'm just, like, blown away. I can't do this stuff. Like, there's no freaking way. I love watching people do this stuff, though. So much fun. Yeah, I, I will watch. I, I will watch. Yeah, I watch other people suffer and put themselves through that stress. But I, <sighs> I can't. I, I'm not gonna lie. It's any of the Mario games, I just never really liked the inputs. They felt really like kind like of squeeze yourself. It, like delayed. You know, they didn't feel as precise as they should be. So I always right. got frustrated and blamed the game when I couldn't do any of them. So I just stay away from it. This is just amazing to me. It's just unhealthy. You're so good at Rocket League, and you don't, and you feel like it's. Mario has in too much input delay. I'm saying okay, it right that's now. Not Anyways, real. next up, we have a clip from Candyland as she attempts to read from her chat using an, an American accent. A T between an N and a vowel gets removed. Oh. International, not international. 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 Dentist, not international. In the international. Hello, y'all. I'm international. Hello, y'all. Hey, y'all. Put some butter on my waffles and smack them good. Hi, y'all. I would like I would like y'all to put some butter on my on my waffles and smack them good. Thanks. Oh wait, did I, was that T U S? <laughs> <laughs> was that was that a comp like did someone put that or did you just, that was just the first thing that came to her mind put some butter on my waffles and smack them good <laughs> what is that clip like i never know what this that's not like. my phrase i am adopting that phrase but what did that come from I just never know what that kind of stuff, if it's like that was on purpose or it was just like... <laughs> you gotta be was, skeptical, yeah. Yeah, or just like she said that on purpose to like get clipped and now we're showing it on the show. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I never, I never know well, what that stuff Because it's like it an was... easy low hanging fruit kind of situation. Oh, who, who clipped this? Tyler? Come on. I think... <laughs> like what the... Call out. Yes. All right. It's truly the best time of day when we scroll through the Twitterverse to bring you all the things the pros blesses us on their timeline. I love a good subtweet, especially when it teaches all of us a nice lesson. Owner of Splice, Marty, a.k.a. Laser Chicken, says most industries have very small circles. Treat relationships as massively important if you want to grow in your career. Esports is no different. Already had someone knock in an interview, badmouth us to others, and that got back to us. Digging your own grave isn't smart. Hashtag Daily Egg. Uh, this is so real, and this applies to every single aspect uh, of life. You know, I just don't get what... I, just a joke, even if... You're not looking out for yourself. You're not trying to watch your own back by like, okay, well, I can't badmouth because it could come around again. Yeah. Just don't be a dick in the first place so that you don't badmouth, right? Like, I, like if you're gonna do it, say it to the person's face. That's sure. that's why I believe it. And, and just say it to it's, the person's face. Yeah, no, really. I just seems, like you're a dick. You, and you are. No, I, it just seems very odd to like go around anywhere. It's not odd. It's not odd because people get salty. Okay, people get salty, and you just don't like think twice about what you say before it comes in your mouth. I am guilty of this too. Like sometimes I put my foot in my mouth because I'm just saying something because I think it's funny at the time, and I'm not being serious. Then it could be taken seriously. So um, yeah, but that's I mean, this different. happens all the time. No, but but what Marty is saying is absolutely correct. Like you have to 
you, really think before you open your mouth because this industry is very small, okay? And even if you're, especially if you're like tweeting stuff too, like you're just completely shooting yourself in the foot. It's best to be kind to everybody. Also look at the other side of things. Look at from their perspective too. Like don't just think they're out to get you. It could be something not even related to you at all. Don't be so salty about everything in life. My, my whole personality is based around not thinking about what I'm about to say next. I know. That's and why and we that scripted. That works for you. <laughs> and that's why I have to write words for you. That exactly. You don't say. Thank you. All so right. let's read these next words you wrote for me. Kay. Oh, hey, look. It's Dr. Disrespect. <laughs> not listening to laser chickens because he don't care. He's Dr. Dr. Disrespect. Hey guys, Jason Schreier here, editor for Kotaku. Analytics shows that Kotaku is on the uprise, averaging three to five likes per tweet compared to one to three likes one year ago. I also wrote a book about video games. I don't want to brag, but it's a favorite here at the office. I hate myself. Wow, Dr. Disrespect. What? I get it's the character. That was that was some mad disrespect. Uh, yeah, I mean, that was Where did that disrespect. come from? Like, well, I mean, it is in his title. He is, the, he is I guess, meant to disrespect, if you will. But, uh, yeah, I mean, obviously there's been a back and forth here. Jason did write about him okay. uh, for Kotaku. So he's got some mm -hmm. salt that he's got to say. But, listen, Jason's not going to take that salt lying down, I can tell you that right now, because he responded saying, hmm, hey, man. Like I said, I'd be happy to chat anytime. If it makes you feel more comfortable, I can Skype from the bathroom. Oh, that, yeah. oh okay. Yo, he actually All ended right. up getting more likes than the doctor. No kidding. Reply. That's real reply. because it's Literally. like a good, uh, if a, a well phrased comeback is always better than the original insult. Mm. Oh, like, and there's there's no way to come back. If you, you have a good yeah. one, that's it. Doctor disrespect cannot go back at that anymore. Mm -hmm. Unless it is like the best insult we've ever seen in the history of mankind, yeah. then no, there's, that's it. That's the end of it and you just lost that battle. Well, what happened here really was esports and streamers versus mainstream gaming journalism. Okay. So the mainstream gaming journalists were really on Jason's side and, and a lot of them came to his aid and liked his tweets because Jason has been a staple in this community for a long time and mm -hmm. people do respect him a lot in this world. Um, but a lot of people on the streaming side, there's just a divide there because some people feel like game journalists are you know, useless. They're they different worlds. And they're completely different worlds. So like there there's not there's not a mutual respect there, unfortunately, coming through and it's definitely showed uh, in these tweets as well. So mm -hmm. hopefully we can one day get on the same page and I don't know, love each other and respect each other. But I don't until think so. now we'll just deal with these salty internet memes. And uh, we're, we'll have them, we'll highlight them on the show and talk about them. Yeah, well, speaking <laughs> of, let's move on because it is time to get us some crowd control. It's time to show you a bunch of useless things. Mm. Our first one brings us inspiration. A man of skill and culture got caught in traffic and this is what happened. Man gets tired of sitting in traffic, hacks billboard to stream porn. That is some watchdogs level stuff right there. No, that's <laughs> yo, not true. yo, straight up. No, so, I, yeah, happen. I looked into it. I looked into it. This is in Indonesia where uh, porn is like actually illegal. So this man actually was potentially facing t 12 years in jail. Wow. But yeah, he got bored. The login details were up on the billboard, like right there while he was in traffic. And he's like, I guess this is my opportunity. This is the moment I've been living for my whole life. How did he, like, so for 10 minutes they, was up there before they cut power. How did, I just don't know how they caught him. Like, I don't know how any of that works. Hmm? Right? Like they found his IP address? Oh yeah, like, they could I find don't... the device that went into it. He didn't okay. particularly hack it, and it okay. wasn't a very good hack, but Obviously he did him. put some up there, and that, that, that is a man of culture. You know what? Like, shooters gotta shoot, right? Yeah, go for Ooh. it. Just send it sometimes, you know? You gotta send her butt. <laughs> get that good, good content on the big screen. Time to for a get off my lawn moment. There's always seems to be a cycle of with Minecraft. Well, most games die out when a large chunk of the player base disappears. Minecraft has its own cycle. So game starts getting popular. Because of popularity, a lot of kids join. Now that kids join, it becomes uncool for the adults. The adults start leaving. The kids eventually move to another popular game. Minecraft gets cool again for adults. Repeat cycle. That's fact. I, I've, now kids, seen, man. I've now seen um, a bunch of adults again. Uh, I'm an adult, right? People my age <laughs> are, are playing it again. <laughs> it seems to be a thing. Like it's just, it's all of a sudden on the rise in popularity again. And what's great about it is taking this break and going back into it, they've mm. added so much content. Have yeah, you played I Minecraft recently? No, I told you, I, I rage quit on my first night. <laughs> oh yeah, you and died right away. Time. Have you literally never played Minecraft? Well, I told you, What's I that been a decade? for one day and then I died and then I didn't come back. Well, can hey, we, we've been over this. We need to get you streaming <laughs> on Twitch and playing some Minecraft. That is content I would I pay know, to watch. I know, because you want me to do it so bad, I don't want to do it. Well, so do it. 
<laughs> do it. I'll watch. Don't I'll even subscribe. Okay, all, right. Okay. all right. Anyways, let's end this day by making us all realize how unskilled and lazy we are. Claptrap9 is a 14-year-old who's been making amazing Little Big Planet maps for a while. He's overdone it now, though, by making a map editor in a map editor. <laughs> We can see how he works and what makes him tick. So what else should we put down or should we just start from the beginning? Oh yeah, put one of these guys down, uh, see how they act and let's go. Oh my god, Boom Boom just runs straight for you. Keep running, Mario. I've got the seesaws do work. That is super impressive. A little bit laggy, but that's okay. Oh, these work too, that's so cool. How about the on-off switches? I think the angry sun might be more intimidating in this mode. It actually works. That is so cool. Well, Claptrap9, you have exceeded my expectations once again. He has exceeded everything that I've ever done by the age of 14. 14 years old, he did that? 14, he so, made that. That is... So just to clarify, that was somebody making Super Mario Maker inside of Little Big Little Planet. Little Big Planet. That was Little That's Big incredible. Planet you saw, not Mario Maker. I, I, I'm That's blown stupid. away. I, I remember when people started... Ma I made a level once. You know what was in it? Yeah. It's just a bunch of random stuff in a box. Wait, so that was the extent of the level. For a little bit planning yeah. that? Oh, Brody, I thought you were more creative. It, it, well, I, it was creative. There was a lot of stuff there. Okay, so basically what Brody's saying, don't hire him, but hire that 14-year-old for your next no, project. That, that is dedication. That uh, is insane. Like, my, my ADHD wouldn't let me get five minutes into that. I before know. I'm off playing something else even. We're gonna have like a therapy sesh soon, don't worry. But Why? that's gonna be tomorrow, cause that's it for Anita today. Okay. Remember you can hit us up on all our socials, just say hi or send us some stuff to react to. You can find us everywhere at Squad State. We'll see you later.